Out of the heels of two cryptids, I'm back with a third one. Although one was an actual human boy and the other one is an entirely different can of worms. I don't know where I was going with this. So, the Jersey or Leeds Devil, a widely known demonic monster from the state of New Jersey, haunting the Pine Barrens, a place that already has its fair share of supernatural stories. There are several variations on the origins of the Jersey Devil, all of them taking place during the 18th century. One tells of Deborah Smith Leeds, who cursed her unborn child, who was going to have been her 30th offspring. As a result, it was born with cloven hooves, clothes and a tail. A different version of the tale entails Mrs. Shroud of Leeds Point, who wished that if she ever had another child, it would be the devil. A similar curse, but this time the boy was only born with deformities. Ashamed, she locked the kid into her basement. However, during a terrible thunderstorm, it transformed amidst the lightning and escaped from captivity. Another, more distinct variant recites the time Mother Leeds, a witch living in Burlington, slept with the devil himself in 1735. The child conceived in their union was human at birth, but transformed shortly. Five years after the events, the Christian church performed an exorcism in the woods, banishing the creature for more than a hundred years. So far there have been more than 2000 reports on its sightings since its birth, with various characteristics. It's about 3 to 4 feet tall, which is from somewhat below to a bit over 1 meter. It has a boxy head, often likened to that of a dog, horse or deer, with glowing eyes, a long neck and in some cases horns. It is bipedal, with crane-like hind legs and again horse hooves. The front limbs are diminutive and either end in pose, clothes or horse hooves, similar to the legs. It also has a thin prehensile tail and bat wings. There are many oddities linked to the Jersey Devil, with its footprints being the most prominent. They say its hoof prints end without a trace in the middle of roads or open fields, or lead from one roof to the next, even going up trees. Disappearing or dead livestock is also often attributed to the monster, as well as a piercing, eerie cry at night. One of the earliest reports of the creature comes from Joseph Bonaparte, brother to the great Emperor Napoleon. By the way, I know he wasn't short, but this is likely one of the very first memes surviving centuries, so I'm not gonna be the one to put a stop to it. Anyway, in the mid-1800s, he was out hunting near Bordentown, New Jersey. He wrote of a creature attacking poultry and sheep between 1840 and 1841. The monster had odd footprints and a piercing cry. This one might have been among the first reports, but the most widely known involves a very busy few days and the following weeks in 1909. On a Sunday, the 16th of January, a bat-winged beast with glowing eyes was seen in Woodbury and subsequently in Bristol, Pennsylvania, where it was shot upon but not hit. Additionally, people saw many hoof prints in the snow. By the next morning, the prints were everywhere around Burlington, Columbus, Heading and several other towns. People attempted to find the monster with dogs, but the animals refused to follow the tracks, furiously resisting when forced. Two days later, Mr. and Mrs. Nelson Evans were wakened by noises around their home in Gloucester. From their window, they spotted, well, this thing by their description. Looks fine to me. On the following day, the Jersey Devil was seen in Collingswood, Headlandfield, Moortown, and Pemberton, and Riverside. The sightings continued until February, forcing several factories, schools, and shops to close due to the mass hysteria. The monster was still spotted during and after February, but it was a lot less common and the fear of the public slowly died down. There have been many reports since, like a cab driver attacked by a winged beast while changing tires in 1927, or a couple harassed by a flying monster in the Pinelands in 1961, as well as its piercing cry heard at night throughout the decades. People still seem to encounter it to this day, yet, after all this time, we still lack any material evidence. Yep, it's Mr. Party Pooper here, demystifying yet another supernatural tale. So, what do you think the Jersey Devil is? I'm not accepting demon or unknown species as answers. Let me sift through the options. Some say that ordinary animals are misidentified, viewed as a monster either due to poor visibility, the reputation of the Pine Barrens or many other reasons. The animal most often associated with the Jersey Devil is a sandhill crane, which, eh? Apart from the legs, neck, its size and the fact that it flies, there aren't many similarities. I looked through a list of birds found in the state of New Jersey and there aren't many contenders for Jersey Devil-like animals. 
Apart from the crane, perhaps the wood stork, rosate spoonbill and some herons and aigrettes, like the great blue heron, fit the bill the most. The one thing the crane has over the other avian candidates is that it is known to attack humans when it feels threatened. Concerning other classes of animals, bats living here are also rather small, not likely to be mistaken for devils. Either way, it doesn't take much for a person in the mindset of wanting to see the Jersey Devil to spot something that does the trick for them. According to Jeff Brenner of the Human Society of New Jersey, the guy who proposed the sandhill crane, he himself was occasionally mistaken for the monster when he covered himself in mud to ward off mosquitoes by living in the pine barrens. Yep, he was living there. You'd think if anyone has seen the devil it should have been him. But I guess he was too skeptical? There are also a few people who believe it is actually a pterosaur. I know I imply that I won't entertain such thoughts, but I'll say one thing about this. It was spotted during winter. Needless to say, sub-zero temperature is not something reptiles fancy. Other arguments that would dispute an unknown species also apply here, like the lack of material evidence in the form of remains or photographs. Anyway, back on more probable voters. Many believe that most sightings were hoaxes. In at least some cases, these people are right. Several of the reports and events seem to have been indeed staged, as documented based on confessions or other surrounding information. Notable ones include a man admitting to have produced some of the footprints during the 1909 period of terror, or the publicist of Philadelphia's Arch Street Museum who bought a kangaroo and attached clothes and wings to the animal to show it off as the Jersey Devil. People say all sorts of things to gain even a second of publicity, so indeed, at least part of those 2000 plus accounts can be deemed fake. Another very elaborate possibility has to do with the history of the region, as well as the Jersey Devil's alternate name, Leeds Devil. The Leeds family lived in uh, Leeds Point and produced the local almanac, which dealt with astrology, Christian occultism, mysticism, cosmology, demonology, angelology and natural magic among others. This was deemed very paganistic and blasphemous by the local population and the fact that the family had a pro-monarchy standpoint did not help their case. In addition, title Leeds, yes, that was his name, had a bit of a public argument with Benjamin Franklin and his poor Richard Almanac. By the end, Benjamin jokingly referred to Titan as a ghost even after his death. Their poor public standing, paired with the already rich folklore of the region, might have turned the wyvern on their family crest into the Leeds Devil. The general description of the monster, as well as the fact that despite having its origins in the 18th century, sightings were not reported until the early to mid-1800s, coincide well. So what is the final verdict? Well, it's most likely a combination of all three. Another folklore monster turned into a cryptid through hoaxes, gullible and impressionable people, and the infamy of the Pine Barrens, among other factors. If you think about it, all the tangible aspects of the Jersey Devil are extremely vague. The piercing sound at night can literally be anything, the Slavic Drakovac, for example, is itself based on such noises. The hoof prints, those could also be whatever. Dead livestock and flying creatures as well. There isn't even any substantial evidence to refute, witnesses alone do not prove anything. With all that being said, we cannot be on the shadow of a doubt say that these are the only explanations. However, cryptozoology is a fickle beast. Most people try to find undiscovered species based on these reports, but more often than not the truth behind these myths are something entirely different. Sightings and folklore should not be taken at face value. What we can say with absolute certainty though is that the Jersey Devil is not a supernatural beast or a bad horse monstrosity. But in an alternate universe where it is indeed a unique species, what would it actually be? Based on its appearance, the first animal that comes to mind is a fruit bat. Other than the tail, legs and vestigial arms, it fits to be rather well. There are a few extremely large species reaching 1.5 to 1.7 meter wingspans. Trouble is, these animals do not live in the Americas. However, this might be to our advantage. You see, some features of the Jersey Devil do not fit an ordinary megapet. They are not carnivores for one. Luckily, other representatives of the Rhinolophidae superfamily can be found on the continent. The very superfamily fruit bats split from back in the day. This means we have relative freedom when designing this realistic devil, which itself would belong to a brand new family. 
So, we'll take inspiration from the look of Megabats, making the head, body and wings of the George that will fit their appearance. Bats can be insectivorous or carnivorous, so them obtaining a larger size and going after larger prey is a possibility. This look also means that the Jersey Devil, much like many Megabats, opted to be a daylight animal, being incapable of echolocation. This coincides with the fact that it was mostly seen during the day, showing lower activity at night. The piercing scream also fit well with the bats, who are very vocal mammals communicating with all manner of chitters, chirps and howls. When it comes to other parts of the design though, we'll have to take a few liberties. First of all, the neck. We can elongate it a bit, but not by much. Why? Simply because it would not need it, it's just extra weight. The reason cranes or herons have long necks is the way they feed, striking at fish or frogs. The only reason for it in the case of the Jersey Devil I could imagine is to offset the long legs, but that is an issue of its own, so let's stick to this length for now. Moving down the body, we come to the diminutive arms. Yeah, those have to go, I'm afraid. In my Griffin video I explained this more in depth, but hexapod vertebrates are not a thing. We could invent an evolutionary path to make that happen here, but at that point we can do anything, and there is a much better solution here. It could be one of two things. One is a distinct pattern on the belly, which could resemble limbs in the heat of the moment. However, this solution is lame, more of a band-aid than anything. There is a much better way to achieve the look of vestigial limbs without having actual arms. I introduce you to winged cats. While this phenomenon is not too common nowadays, there are two ways these wings can appear on cats. Due to lack of grooming, the fur of certain breeds, mostly long-haired ones, can become matted, resembling underdeveloped limbs. Additionally, rubber skin disease, which affects many animals including humans, is a hereditary disorder which may lead to the appearance of loose flaps of skin. You mammals and your disgusting afflictions. Anyways, this phenomenon comes in handy. Although I would personally opt for the hair's tendency to be matted at a specific point on the body, as most of the species being afflicted by a condition would probably reduce their competitiveness a fair bit. With the easy parts done, let's move on to legs and tail. To be fair, if I can explain the legs, I'm golden, as the tail is kind of a consequence of that. That being said, this is a tough one to crack. As I've said with the neck before, there is no real necessity for long legs. Even the largest of megabats rest hanging from trees upside down, as they are quite light, not even reaching 2 kilos. With crane like limbs, that position would be impractical. With all that said, there is one possible use for such legs, or at least similar ones. The way birds of prey catch their, well, prey is superior to just trying to bite it. Even if the realistic Jersey Devil would not have such a long appendage, there is a distinct advantage to such a weapon, allowing it to be rather competitive with minimal increase in weight. As I've said earlier though, it would render upside down resting impractical, so they'd have to rest like most birds. The legs are quite a drastic change though. As you know, bats have their wing membranes stretching between their legs and tail in addition to the fingers and body. Such a change would massively decrease the effective size of the wings and would make maneuvering more difficult. The prehensile tail is a bit of a blessing in this guys though. With the legs out of the picture, a long tail would come real handy, enabling the membrane to stretch much further back, somewhat substituting what the legs would provide. At the end of the day though, the Jersey Devil would have to give up part of its area proficiency and speed, but would definitely still be a formidable predator. Huh, what do you know? It does kinda look like a wyvern. If something like this was circling overhead screeching, wouldn't be hard to see why people call it the devil. With these things messing about, I bet there would have been several more cases of mass hysteria. With this, we've come to the end of the video though. If you like what I did here, just look at the little face. Liking, subscribing, ringing the bell, doing all the usual stuff would be greatly appreciated. If you have another monster in mind you would like to see translated to reality, please do leave a comment, and I hope to see you next time. Bye!